I'm Harry Women and this is Behind the Art. Well, I've lived in the country my whole life, always been into field sports and um, like shooting, anything like that, and always always like knives and uh, their uses. Always mess about with knives in the woods and I just wanted to make some of my own. So that's what I started. And now I think, oh, well, I started collecting knives when I was really young and um, I just, uh, I loved all the different shapes and all. I didn't really know what a good knife was or a bad knife, but I, um, I was always interested in that. But, uh, I think I'm inspired by, um, there's a lot of good knife makers out there. Robert Lovelace, Bob Kramer. Um, Wayne Goddard was a big inspiration because that was the first knife making book I got. And uh, he's just about uh, the 15 pound knife shop. He can make you know, a nice workshop out of cheap tools. And um, so that, that was a good start for me. And um, I think other things that inspired me, like historical things, uh, depends on the piece I'm making. So. If it's from a certain era, I'll look at blades from that era and try to bring some of that into the pieces I make. Say, I mean, m most of the people that I took inspiration from and learnt from are on, on the internet. Now you go on, onto YouTube and uh, you can watch anyone. There. Bob Kramer, uh, he inspired me for my chef's knives. Um, then you've got Bob Loveless, obviously. He's uh, the inspiration for my hunting knives. But um, he has a lot of things like Forge and Fire. That's a great show to get things off of. But yeah, I think um, you know uh, Bill. He was a, a a big help. Well, uh, we we've I started making knives before uh, before he did. Really, you know, he's always been working on uh, axes and things. He does lovely axes. But um, he uh, he's all, he he puts a, a an edge on a on a knife that you can shave with. You know, so he uh, he, he showed me that, and then we help each other out. You know, but yeah, he's uh, he was a big help. And um, obviously my dad showed me some skills and all that when I was growing up. Uh, always messing about with an old grinder, you know, with um, bits of wood, making old kn like knives out of sticks. I'd rather have that than anything else and go and mess about in the woods, you know. So, and that was good because I, I got used to the tools. I didn't feel nervous when I was going on the grinder because they can be t intimidating, especially like the, uh, the buffing wheels and all that, most dangerous tool in the shop and the forge. But, you know, um, working around heat like doing felt roofing and things like that that all helps so you, you don't feel nervous with it so yeah I, I think um definitely growing up that that helped me out a lot so um i think that's where everyone kind of starts because you know some of the materials out there are quite expensive and if you mess up on something like that then that's uh compared to an old file that you can look at and if it goes wrong it doesn't matter you know so i started off with that but some of them can be quite tricky like the rasp knives i make that's uh You've got to get the right ones because some are case hardened, so you can never harden them again really to get a functional blade. But the ones I use, you can uh, you can get a real hard edge on them. And, uh, but it does take a bit of skill, but it's uh, it's all trial and error really when you're first starting out. Well, even now, you know. So yeah, I've I've, I've done a bit of that uh, shit like sharpening, restoring edges is uh, more what I do, you know, because um, you you're getting there massive chunks out of them, so you have to. To do about a lot of hand on a stone or whatever that'll take your ages so with my machines i can get down quick and get it razor sharp or as sharp as you want it yeah so sharpening uh that was the first thing i started out doing i'd say i mean um it's quite a tricky thing because you've got to get the angle dead right and uh you've got to kind of turn yourself into a, a machine you've got to do it the same on every side you know and uh i wasn't very good at it at all i messed up a lot of blades but um a friend of mine bill he, he showed me how to sharpen and um, and yeah, I started out on stones, and now obviously with the machines, you can put an edge on quick, you know. But it's all about keeping it nice and even, same angle on both sides, and that's the uh, that's the thing. If you're on a stone and you change your angle slightly, you got you got to start all over again. So, but that's that's probably the first thing I started out on. Yeah, I make these a uh, pair of tongs. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I make, I make tongs, um, make some bangles, coat hooks, you know, there's plenty of things that, that you can do. Also, I'm lots of the uh, blacksmithing side, so 
you can you can really make anything you know make them as fancy as you want this is just an old piece of rebar just uh forge that and to get that shape um i think uh yeah i think i think uh, i know when to stop but i i have an idea in mind and if it doesn't look like that or if it doesn't look better than that because most of the time i start with something quite basic and um you know i don't, I don't try to do too much detail in planning but i think that's why my knives are always one-offs you know and unique but um i think when i get to the end of the knife if it if it doesn't look as good as i wanted it to then that's that's not good enough but if it looks better which most of the time they do i have an idea in my mind it's quite basic and they come out and i add little bits to it as i'm going and yeah, you know, but I think you can overdo it sometimes, make them look too, too crazy. You know, too many, too many things added. But yeah, I think, I think I'm perfectionist to a certain degree. I, I think, um, I think I'm, I, I'll probably be more of a rustic uh, craftsman because um, the way I make things, you know, the tools I use. A lot of knife makers use um, things of a higher quality, but I've modified them to suit what I need to do, you know, like some of my grinders. The forge is, is good quality, you know, and things like that. But yeah, I sound quite rustic, but, um, I f and it depends on the piece I'm making. If it's a, a tool, you know, if it's a, sh a chef's knife or hunting knife, then I'll probably be more rustic. But if I'm doing a historical piece, I'll, I'll make it more arty, you know. It all depends on what you're making, really. Yeah, I do, yeah, it's, um, it's nice to bring something old and beaten up back to life, you know, but uh, I, th I think I enjoy the axes the most, that's, that's good fun, because, you know, they do get really worn and rusty and pitted, but it, it depends how long you want to spend on them, you know, but yeah, I, I enjoy that, that's, that's a good part of it, they, they can get to a point where you think, oh, that's not worth it, you know, but, um, and some of them are, are too far gone, but bringing it back is, uh, it can lower the value of something, but it, it depends on how historical it is, you know, or where it's from. Um, I, th I think there's uh, more people do it recently, um, like TV shows like Fools in Fire make people think, oh yeah, I, I can do that, and um, and you can, you know, it's it's, it's uh, it, it can be tricky, but you know, it's, it depends what you want to do. You can you can take an old file, you don't have to forge it, you can cut out the shape of a knife, you know, and make your own knife there. So you can start anywhere, and um, I think more and more people want to do that. But uh, how long they last at it, you know, it can, it can be quite tedious, but it depends how much you like it. I think um, the internet can help a lot. I mean, on the YouTube, you know, you can find anything on there. You know, there's so many makers that put things up, and that's very helpful. You know, there are a website like Blades, uh, Blades Forum. They're quite helpful, you know, for questions you've got. But uh, I think a lot of it really was trial and error. You know, I learned a lot from my own mistakes, and I, I made plenty of them. I still do, but... Um, I think that's the best way to learn, you know, when you uh, when you trial and error. Um, I think uh, late, later on, I mean, I'd, I'd always help someone out who was starting, you know, because, um, you know, a couple of people will help me, like I say, Bill taught me how to sharpen, things like that. It really does, uh, it's, it's good to have someone to go to, you know, so I'd always help someone. But um, I think teaching, that's probably something I'd do down the line, you know, as it, as it goes on. But, yeah, it's definitely something I'd consider, 100%. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's all crafts now are struggling, like, you know, you see the same thing with leather work and saddlery, you know, people would rather go and buy something cheap off the internet and buy it a couple of times a year and it still work out less money for, you know, something handmade, but that is made to last and that can last you your whole life, you know, if you treat it well. So I think some people want that, but most people don't, you know, but uh, I think that's how you can keep it alive is to buy more handmade things, you know, rather than imports from China and all these uh, all these cheap knockoffs. you're better off with a real deal, you know. Um, well, first of all, I think um, more people could, you know, if you're into forging, I think it's good to share it with others, you know. Anyone who's got a little bit of an interest in it, take them out and help them, you know. But uh, mostly, buy more handmade knives. I think that's the way to keep it alive, you know. Buy my knives. <laughs> you want to keep me going, buy my knives. But, yeah, I think uh, that's the best way to do it. Um, I don't know, I think it's given a lot to me, that's for sure. You know, it's, uh, it's definitely something I'm passionate about. But um, I think I've given my time, you know. I think I'm, I'm just 
another person who's keeping it going. And as long as you're doing that, it stays alive. You can definitely get lost in it. And um, the hours can go by very quick in, in every stage of it, you know, from the start, from the forge to the finish where you're making the handles, you know. You can, uh, you can definitely get lost in it, and it's, it's a great pastime. It's, uh, I think if you're doing it for the money, you, you're going to struggle. If you're doing it for the love of it, you're, you're going to be fine. You know, you just, you, it's got to be something you've got to be passionate about because it is, it's hard work. It's dirty work. Not, not hard work as in, um, you know, what most people do, but it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's wearing because you can sit there for hours polishing a blade, you know. But if you love it, then it's fine for you. Just, uh, just give it a go, you know. If it doesn't work out, then um, you know that it's something that you might not want to do. But if you give it a go and and you're interested in it, then that's how I started out, you know. I'm, I'm no genius, <laughs> you know what I mean. At the end of the day, you can uh, you can go out there, take a bit of metal, knock it about, and enjoy that. But I think I think if you if you've got an interest in it, give it a go because uh, worst thing you can do is mess up. You know, but that's how you, that's how you get better, it's learning by your mistakes, so definitely give it a go. Cool, I'm glad you The pheasant just ran straight across yeah. the garden, that was very distracting. <laughs> <laughs>